in biology when we look at like procedures or, or you know uh, mechanisms what we say is when something is necessary but not you know sufficient so the trips waiver is necessary but not sufficient to move forward not just for this scenario but i think all the stuff that we do during covid sets a path right for what happens next the reason why it's necessary but not sufficient is that in addition to having the permission to create those vaccines what manufacturers abroad need in many other countries is the tech know-how it's the recipe and the companies have not been as forthcoming to share that recipe. You know, there have been efforts to, you know, back engineer, uh, for reverse engineer some of the mRNA technology. I mean, I think we're talking mostly about mRNA technology because it is a powerful tool. And I don't think that most of the general public recognizing recognizes what an incredibly powerful tool it is because it is a plug and play technology that can be used in many, many different future emerging infectious diseases threats, but it is also one that's going to change the landscape if we can do it right in terms of endemic diseases, everything from malaria, which by the way, there are mRNA, now mRNA potential efforts being looked at. And so this is a high stakes game for many of these companies who see this as a proprietary technology, which, you know, giving up the, the recipe means you know, and I, I will step back and say, I clearly support giving up the recipe and allowing the rest of the world not to have millions of people die from endemic infectious diseases. But, but what they see is a big loss and they don't want to share that recipe. So that's one part. The WHO has played a role by setting up mRNA tech transfer hubs, um, which if the companies will agree to it, there are already hubs set up that will facilitate knowledge sharing around this new technology so that new manufacturers, so, um, you know, South Africa and India, and India in particular, has, has done an incredible amount of uh, vaccine production even before COVID. I think like, they, they produce like 60% of the world, the rest of the world's vaccines outside of the U.S. for the resource limited world before COVID. Um, and so the ability to be able to create this with the tech know-how would revolutionize the world vaccine, you know, scenario. But the, the other things that companies have done, the short of that, you know, so is it enough? The, short, the other things that are done, so the, the, the tech know-how, the, the mRNA tech know-how hubs haven't been, there was, hasn't been as much partnership from Pfizer and from Moderna. And instead, what they have pursued is what they said is finish and fill plants, where they basically send the ready material with the recipe already cooked. And then they're filled up in, in particular areas. And so they're setting up one, I think, in South Africa. Um, no, I'll take that back. Moderna said they're going to set up a plant in Africa, but did not specify where, which country and when it would be. But so they've, they've talked about setting up this finish and fill plant. And Pfizer, I think, has looked um, to do the same somewhere in Latin America as well. But the trouble and the reason why I think it's necessary but not sufficient is because the, the idea, the challenges to getting vaccines um, to the rest of the world are more, also more complicated for the reasons we talked about, this vaccine hesitancy is playing a role, and last mile distribution, their challenges. COVAX wasn't just supposed to buy vaccines, it was supposed to provide the funds to be able to get these. Gotta keep that vaccine in negative, you know, 60 degrees Celsius all the way to the last mile of clinics. They needed to be able to provide that capacity. And in some of the places that I worked in, like electricity is not really reliable. You know, like what I've been, when I give like just thinking about places in Liberia where they would never be able to try to get, you know, these vaccines to some of the most remote places because there's just no access to reliable power. So how do you how do you sort of get you know this distribution that requires funding and COVAX has for a long time had a funding gap on those activities, and then vaccine hesitancy, which of course we're all battling. So we need more supplies but we also need investment in a lot of those other aspects.